Hey folks, Gwei. The other day we were talking a little bit about uh, how to face those crooked judges of the world. How to face those people, those systems, those cultural and societal norms that we are desperate to change that don't want to change though. That fight and struggle to, to preserve themselves as they are. We said that we have to be like the widow Jesus describes, the persistent widow. We have to continuously go out and push and push and push and push and push for the justice that we know we deserve, just as, as she did. So that we can make those crooked judges in whichever form they happen to take, finally say, okay, yes, I'll give you what you want. I'll do what you ask. But we also made mention in that video that this isn't an easy task. It can be a really exhausting task. It takes a lot of effort. It comes with a great deal of disappointment, disillusionment. It comes with setbacks. It comes with backsliding. You know, where we think we've gotten ahead, but something happens and we end up seeing the changes that we thought were coming actually go in reverse two or three or four steps. Today I want to share with you the story of a guy named Joe Hill, or a little bit of his story. Joe Hill was a Swedish-born American uh, songwriter, poet, author, and labor organizer. He worked, he was a member of and worked for the industrial workers of the world. He wanted to help workers get their fair share, help them get what they, what they deserved for the work they were doing, for the jobs they were doing. In 1915, Joe Hill was executed in Utah. He was convicted of the murder of a former police chief and, and the, the chief's son. Later on, his defense was actually corroborated in some letters that were found. See, he had told people that he was shot by a... Uh, by a rival, someone that uh, loved the same woman that Joe loved. Letters were discovered years later, uh, written by the woman in question who indeed confirmed that it had happened. But it's what Joe said just before his execution that I wanted to share with you because I think what he says to his friend Bill I think it's important for us as, as we go forward, especially as we go forward knowing that this work that's in front of us is so challenging, that bringing about a, a, a more just, more equitable, more inclusive world, uh, a world where, where people, all people, are valued the same as all other people. knowing that that work is so, is going to be so difficult. Joe's words, I, I think, they, they say something important to us today. What he says is, don't waste your time mourning. Organize. It's amazing. You know, just before his execution, he writes to his buddy, another member of the union he was a part of, and says, don't waste your time being sad about me. Organize. Don't waste your time on bitterness. Organize. Don't waste your time on anger. Organize. Get to work. Get out there. Get together with people. Get moving. Now, we might look at the word organize and say, well, it's about your calendar. It's not about organizing our schedule. It's about organizing from that, from that labor union perspective, bringing people together. Getting people together who are interested in the work. Getting people together who are interested in, in, in the vision that you all share. It sounds a lot like the early church, actually. Now, Jesus doesn't ever say, go and form denominations and go and form dioceses and go and form churches. Instead, he gives us an example, right? Throughout the course of his ministry, Jesus brings people together. Not only to listen to him, not only to learn from him, but he brings people together to equip them to do the work that, 
that they're going to, that they're going to do, the work that he's calling them to do. He brings people together and trains them. He brings people together who share a vision, who share a desire to bring about the kingdom that Jesus keeps talking about. Joe's words, don't mourn, organize. They matter to us now. They always have, but they matter to us today. When we find ourselves in these places where we're disappointed with, with one outcome or another, we can't waste our time mourning that outcome. We can't waste our time lamenting that outcome. We can, we can grieve about it. We can wave our fist at it. But ultimately, it, it, it comes down to our desire to, to say enough. Okay, this has happened. But the next opportunity is out there. And we need to grasp that opportunity. We need, we need to grab that opportunity to make it what it could be. And in order to do that, let's organize. Because it's in organizing people. It's in getting a group of people together that we find our strength. We find our encouragement. We find our vision and our purpose. It's in that organizing that we're able to pick ourselves back up. We're able to help our brothers and sisters pick themselves back up. We're able to help our partners our teammates pick themselves back up, dust themselves off. We're able to empower them and encourage them. We're able to, to give them hope. We're able to share the energy that comes from, from being creative in a group. Share the energy that comes when we share our, our desires for the future. Yeah, we're we're going to have... We're going to have moments like this. We're going to have moments where we despair. No matter who we are, we're going to have moments where we, where we think that's it. It's never going to change. Everything is going to pot. And we have a choice. We can, we can lament and we can roar and we can cry into the sky. We can howl at the moon. Or we can organize. We only have so much energy to spend. We can mourn what was. We can mourn what has come about. Or according to Joe, we can organize. I say we organize. I say we get together. I say we gather in groups. I say we help one another. I say we feed one another. We heal one another. We provide for one another, and I say, we start moving forward again. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray that you and I, no matter what comes, we will find our teams. We will find our families. We will find our congregation. We will find that group of people who share our vision for the future. We will find the energy that comes from, from surrounding ourselves with those sorts of folks and we will find and engage in our purpose to bring about a better world. Amen. Nemultus.